DFS attorney Maurice Su began by accusing both Lotte Duty Free and the Guam Airport Authority of conspiring against DFS to get them out of the airport and get Lotte in. He makes this allegation on three separate points, all protests that have already been filed with the airport. The first, he notes, is the alleged bribe that took place when Lotte gave about $300 in makeup and a bag to airport board members. The second is when Lotte improperly increased its proposed mag rent after it had already submitted its original proposal. And the third, he says, is on lack of operating procedures on the airport board. And the, the, the body, the government agency, that is responsible for evaluating fairly those bids for the public's benefit is not involved. Unfortunately, the allegations and what the evidence show through the tapes and through the transcripts and through actually what occurred is that at the very least the airport had some involvement in what Latte was trying to do. Unfortunately, the evidence sh is showing that there is at least some, some effort or some willingness to turn a blind eye towards, towards what Latte has done here. But even Judge Bordelio says he found it implausible that a mere $300 gift is evidence that a conspiracy took place that would entice the airport to award a potentially $15 billion contract over 10 years to Lotte. Sa acknowledges that. However, he says that it ties in with protests two and three. He also points out that while Lotte has claimed that they would suffer more harm and injury if a TRO is granted, DFS, on the other hand, won't be able to recover from potential harm if the TRO is denied. This is not a financially motivated or driven lawsuit. Uh, it's a lawsuit driven by the fact that that D DFS really wants to maintain the integrity of this process and to not suffer the very injury related to being ostensibly kicked out for failing to have provided a service or quality of service to the people of Guam and the travelers to Guam. That injury, even if we were to prevail later on and seek damages for it, that injury we can't recover. And that injury is what we're seeking to prevent, really, at base. Guam Airport Attorney A. Bear, however, denies the conspiracy charge. He also informed Judge Bordalia that there was nothing unlawful about the way the contract was awarded. He explains that the Airport Evaluating Committee chose Lotte as the top winner and, in fact, hired an independent expert consultant, Lee Fisher & Associates, to analyze the proposal. This was the first competitive bid for the duty for concession in 30 years. Um, the revenue, this non-airline revenue, is extremely important to the airport. And then they hired Lee Fisher & Associates, which is a worldwide ex airport consultant, one of the best in the world. Lee Fisher took the four proposals and did a financial comparison. Based upon the proposals themselves, the interviews, and that independent financial analysis, which did not, by the way, take into account this alleged increased mag number. Um, it looked at the $13.1 million mag number. Low take came out on top. This evaluation committee was fair. It was what do you mean it didn't take into account the mag number? This this alleged increased mag number that they're saying that they're saying with low well, take. No, I mean, did it take into it account took anybody's it, mag number? It took into account everybody's mag number, and it took into account a $13 million mag number, not a $15 million mag number that they're claiming. And, Your Honor, it's now being called corrupt and a sham and that somehow we're in cahoots with Lotte. And a disappointment doesn't really express the airport's feelings about this. DFS should be ashamed that they have made these claims about these hardworking public servants at the airport.